Good day, everyone. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Dr. Cliff YouTube channel. We're going to learn about eye conditions, common three common eye conditions or injuries that we see in dogs. So stay tuned. Great. Let's get to it. Thanks for joining me. Um, all right. The first thing, the most common thing I see in dogs is pink eye. Now this is actually bacterial conjunctivitis or inflammation of the conjunctiva, which is the tissue around the eye. But it, people get it as well. Children get it, especially if they go to daycare. We just call it pink eye. Now it's a little bit different than what your child or what you guys get as pink eye. It's certainly not as infectious. Uh, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, touching your dog or just don't you know wipe the goop in the eye and stick it in your eye. That wouldn't be a very good idea. But uh, pink eye, very, very common. So the signs are the eye won't actually be pink, it'll be red. The tissue, the eyelid, sort of the tissue inside the eyelid will be swollen, it'll be irritated, it'll be like brick red, and your dog's gonna look like he partied a little too hard because he's gonna have some bloodshot eyes. He may kind of squint a little bit, it may be a little bit puffy, and there may be some pain there or even some sensitivity to the light. Um, now there are some other possibilities, so stay tuned after this little talk because we're going to talk about injuries to the eye as well. But if it is pink eye, and if you're kind of in a jam, it's on a Sunday, you can't get to an emergency hospital, or you want to try something simple before you call your veterinarian, always call your veterinarian first. This is not supposed to replace uh, veterinarian uh, advice or medicine or care, but you can use human eye drops and human eye ointments, not creams, it has to be an ointment, a water-based product uh, on your dog. So things like polysporin eye drops, which is over the counter, or polysporin eye ointment, um, or even like a tobramycin, which is a type of antibiotic. You can get it in drops, again, you can get it in ointment, depending on where you are, it might be over the counter. Um, you can give this uh, to your dog and you literally drop it on the eye or put a little bit, if it's an ointment, put a little bit sort of like a pea sized drop. I mean, it's kind of gross. Some people don't like it, but right on the eyeball and let the dog kind of let your dog blink and it's going to rub it all over the place and help protect it. And that's enough to get uh, your dog feeling good until you can kind of get to the veterinarian. Um, now, very, very important though, if you're going to use your own stuff, do not use anything that has dexamethasone or cortisone in, in it. Anything that ends with zone, cortisone, dexamethasone, betamethasone, any of those things, because those are corticosteroids or anti-inflammatories. And the problem with that is if you have, and this is the second case that we see very, very commonly, is a corneal ulcer, an actual scratch to the eyeball, a scratch or a little hole. And this happens from if the you know, dog does know how to bob and weave and the cat gives it a little uh, right hook to the face, um, if they're playing too rough with their friends and they get a little bit of a kind of an elbow. I was watching UFC last night, so I see a lot of that. A little elbow to the face can cause it. A little bit of dirt in the eye and the dog rubs and blinks and it can scratch the cornea. Now the cornea, the eye itself, it's like an onion, right? It's different layers. Now it's only three or four layers thick before you actually get a rupture of the eye. So it does not take much to have a very, very serious ulcer. But if it scratches, you're gonna see a lot more pain in your dog. And this is why it is important that you avoid using dexamethasones and cortisones because those will actually, they will take away the pain, but they'll actually slow down and stop healing of an ulcer. So what's gonna happen is your doctor, your veterinarian, when he sees your dog, he's gonna put in this thing called fluorescein dye, which originally comes out, it looks like a neon orange, but when it goes in the eye, it's just a little drop, I've actually had it myself, doesn't hurt. It kind of looks a little weird because you can kind of see green. Because when it goes in the eye, it turns into a very bright, almost like Marvel Comics Hulk, bright, bright green on the eye. But the reason we do that is that onion layered uh, eyeball, that cornea, this stain, this fluorescein dye does not stick to the outer layer, the normal healthy layer of the cornea. But if there's a scratch or a hole or some sort of damage and that second layer is exposed, boom, that dye sticks to it. It's bright. It shows us how deep it is. It shows us how big it is. We're going to end up putting on one of those funny cones on your dog, the cones of shame so they can't rub at their eye. Um, we're going to prescribe different eye drop pain medications. 
we're gonna prescribe some much more powerful antibiotic eye drops or ointment. We're gonna stay away from the cortisones, as I mentioned. For the really serious case, and this is where science is kind of weird but super cool, you'll actually have your veterinarian will draw blood from your own dog, clot it, spin it, and pull off the liquid portion, which is the serum, and actually make eye drops out of that serum. They're making a Band-Aid for the eye out of the dog's own healing factors. It's the coolest thing in the world, um, and it's almost like uh, Mother Nature's way of, of helping out the situation. So uh, corneal eye ulcer is very, very uh, serious, very painful, um, but quick access to your veterinarian and quick testing, and boom, they'll heal up super, super fast. And no joke, if this doesn't heal properly and if things aren't dealt with in a timely manner, that eye can rupture and that eye needs to be removed. It's completely useless and it's a source of pain. So uh, don't kid around with corneal ulcers. They're very, very serious. So the last thing that I see is not actually a injury. It's more of a, it's a genetic problem. It's called cherry eye or prolapsed third eyelid. Uh, we see this a lot in Cocker Spaniels, uh, Bulldogs, definitely Bulldogs get it. Uh, we joke that Bulldogs get three of them. They only have two, one in each eye. Um, but they can get all kinds of uh, cherry eye problems. And it usually shows up at two or three months old. It can be a little bit younger. It can be much older. And what essentially happens, I'm going to take off these glasses. We have a third eyelid, we call it. It's basically a tear gland. It produces tears in the corner of the eye. And it'll pop out. It's like if you take your pocket, if you take your pocket and you invert it and pull it out, that's essentially what's happened to this, this gland. The ligaments are weak and it's all swollen and it puffs out. And it literally looks like a kind of a weird cherry sticking out of the eye. Um, people will think it's an injury, it's not. People will think it's an infection, it's not. Uh, your veterinarian will be able to take a look and very quickly say, yes, that is a cherry eye or a prolapsed third eyelid. Um, tear gland and what we end up having to do is we have to basically like a like a you know a pocket and we usually do this if they're young say two three months old we'll do this when they get neutered or spayed at six seven eight months old but we will basically cut a little sort of hole stuff that pocket back in and half sew it and kind of suture it down so it doesn't pop out what you don't want to do, and I still see this, even though way back in the late 90s when I was in vet school, I was told not to do this. Do not remove that cherry eye. And we still see it. Unfortunately, we see breeders, you know, breeders of bulldogs, breeders of cocker spaniels, or other breeds that commonly get these cherry eyes will say to the owners, hey, if your dog gets a cherry eye, my veterinarian will take care of it for 80 bucks or 50 bucks or something like that. Don't let your veterinarian charge you $600 or $1,000 or whatever it may be in your area because it's a scam. All you got to do is bring it, bring it back to me. I'll take care of it over the weekend. I guarantee you if it's $50 or $100, basically if it seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. What's happening is that veterinarian is taking that thing and just going snip and tossing it away. But if you were paying attention, boys and girls, that third eyelid is actually a tear gland. You remove a tear gland, all the other tear glands have to work harder. And what ends up happening is later on in life, five years old, six years old, seven years old, your dog is going to run out of tears and get this condition called Corrado Conjunctivitis Sicca, KCS. We just call it dry eye. Basically, your dog can't produce tears anymore. It's painful, it causes infections, and it's gonna cost you a ton of money for the rest of your dog's life on drops and creams and tests and ointments. So if you see what looks like a kind of a red cherry sticking out of your dog's eye, call your veterinarian. It's gotta be dealt with soon, um, but it's very, very, it's a relatively easy surgery. And please do not find some guy or girl or veterinarian that's gonna do it for a fraction of the price because all they're doing is just snipping it off, tossing it out, and causing a problem down the road. So those are the three sort of most common eye conditions I see at my clinic. Uh, if you like what you hear, comment below. Maybe ask me some questions for some of my upcoming Q&As. Subscribe, follow, tell your friends. 
send me an email. If you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Or if you, uh, you know, just want to make a comment, even if you don't like what you see, let me know. I'm happy to hear it. That's fine. Constructive criticism is great. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Of course, you get some cool uh, photos and stories about my uh, Dr. Cliff Worldwide vet. Uh, travel around the world and the volunteer work we do. And last but not least, the most important thing, always be kind to animals. Thanks.